Fenris are a brand that I've actually featured here on my channel a number of times. And I have to say today I have a watch that I think is one of their best offerings that I have seen to date. This is their reissue of their 1960s DTU field watch. And they did a really good job recreating this watch. It was a US military issue watch. So it was actually used by the US military. So the design actually reflects that. It is a very faithful recreation and we'll get right into it. So it comes in nice packaging as well. Single watch pouch. It's just a pouch, not really a carrier, but it's made out of canvas. It has this black surround on it, and then it just says Benaris that's stitched in, which is really nice. Very heavily padded, as you can see on both sides. Inside is a microfiber, and then of course you're getting a watch. You're getting a little compass that you could add on to your strap, and then you're getting an operation pamphlet. That's basically it. So very simple packaging. All of that money that they saved on the packaging, they definitely put back into the watch. Even though you will use this packaging over again, it's actually pretty nice. You could use it for other things besides your watch, which is nice. And here's the watch. You can see it's a very simple, very straightforward, obviously military used field watch. It gets a very simple, straightforward dial. They actually put Superluminova on the dial and indices. We'll do a loom shot at the end. It's a black dial white lettering there is no other color on the dial there's nothing else on the dial so there's no uh, wording on the dial whatsoever so technically you would call this a sterile dial you have a 12 hour track then a 24 hour track each of the indices are triangles those are loomed the hands are white very simple against a black background very straightforward bead blasted stainless steel case the case is around 39 millimeters i've measured it a few times and I get around 39 millimeters, so it's 39.4, depending on where I catch it. So it's around 39 millimeters, just a little bit over. Uh, you get a pretty sizable crown on here. It is not signed. The crown is 6.4 millimeters. And then the thickness, I think I got about 12.5 without the, uh, the, uh, the single pass through NATO. So 12.8 is what I'm getting right now. You do get a domed, and it's actually a very domed uh, acrylic crystal so it is very domed and boxed and then of course with the single pass through nato so this does get a single pass through seat belt style uh nato strap it's a little bit thicker so you're going to get around 14 millimeters thick i usually don't like a nato strap there's a lot of reasons for that uh and one of the reasons is because it does wear larger so uh, if i own this watch i would actually put this on a traditional strap uh, because that's what I like. But if you like a NATO strap, definitely go for that. And then, of course, the lug to lug is around 47 and a half millimeters. So uh, there you go. So you do get an acrylic crystal on here, not a mineral crystal. I'd prefer a, an acrylic crystal over a mineral crystal. And then, of course, a sapphire crystal above all. But considering the price, I think they've done a really good job on this watch. The movement inside here is a Salida SW200. So you're getting a Swiss made automatic movement inside and one of the benefits of the acrylic crystal is a need for less ar coating you can see there is a, a you know a little bit of reflection that you're getting from this but most of the reflection that you would have gotten if this was a mineral or a uh, sapphire crystal isn't there so it's actually really good uh, and it does not capture a lot of that reflection so uh, there are benefits to an acrylic crystal obviously you can also buff out any scratches that you get on this it's truer to the original watch so it's very true to the original watch i believe the original watch was a little bit smaller than this and i think they've bulked it up only a little bit so at that 39 millimeters i think it's a really good really fair size i'm pretty sure they were uh, smaller but i, I i'm not a hundred percent um, the uh, hardware here, you have bead blasted keepers, and then I believe this is brushed, so it's a little bit different from the case, but nothing that you're really going to notice. And it is signed Benris right there. Um, very, very attractive watch. And they also said that they uh, recreated the case back, basically uh, uh, very similar to the original with the all the original engravings here. I don't know if they've added any extra. Obviously, they put their spec sheet back here, just telling you the uh, the watches. Um, specs a lot of brands do that so I'm pretty sure that wasn't on the original but maybe it was um, and that's really it so you're getting a snap-on case back on here it is 50 meters of water resistance again it's in keeping with that original watch 
So either you're gonna love it or hate it. Um, now, the price on here is actually very good, considering this is also hand assembled here in the United States. So this is also something to note, Venerous, a US company, uh, and they are hand assembling these watches in the US. Uh, you know, that's something to definitely note. This specific watch is the DTU 2AP. I believe this is the only version uh, that they're currently offering with this black dial, and the price is coming in at $595. I think that's a very good price considering three factors. Number one, you're getting the Salita SW200. Number two, it is hand assembled here in the United States. And number three, it's a watch with real history. So if you are interested in that sort of thing and uh, a lot of people are and a lot of people aren't. So if you are concerned about history of your watch uh, and the, sort of the provenance of the watch, uh, this one actually has it. So there are a lot of field watches that are coming out from a lot of different brands. Uh, it's a very popular thing to do is come out with a field watch these days. Uh, and a lot of those micro brands are doing a really good job, but they don't actually have history. This is very similar to something that you would get from, uh, you know, Hamilton, where the watch actually has history history. $595, definitely competing with the Hamilton. Uh, you do get an acrylic crystal on here, not a sapphire. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. And this only has 50 meters of water resistance. You do get a, um, a, a non-scrooting crown and you can obviously wind the movement because it does hack and does hand wind. So very quickly, let me throw this watch on my wrist so you can see what it looks like on my seven and a half inch wrist. And then we will do a quick loom shot. As I mentioned, the hands the indices are loomed. So uh, I will do a quick loom shot. I believe it's just the triangles that are loomed, not everything else. Uh, however, uh, we will definitely check that out. Uh, really quickly today, I am wearing the Zenith Chronomaster Sport, uh, a watch that has really never left my wrist since the moment I got it in for review. Um, just a, a really cool watch and I'm very excited about it. This review will be coming pretty soon. You can see it's actually pretty tight on my wrist, uh, and that's because they did not provide me a, uh, a uh, extra link to actually size it for myself, but that's okay. And there you go. It looks good on my seven and a half inch wrist, that 39, slightly over 39 millimeter case uh, wears really nice, but it does wear thin. As you can see, it sits down really nicely on my wrist. Uh, and it does not wear thick whatsoever. Actually, uh, I was surprised to see that it was over 12 millimeters thick when I did the measurements. Uh, the way that they actually designed the case back on this watch, it sits really close to your wrist um, and it looks a lot thinner than it actually is on your wrist. So it's a very comfortable watch. Um, I was actually surprised as I mentioned. Uh, with the extra NATO strap going through, the single pass through NATO, it still wears thin. Uh, so that's really a, a very good design. Anyway, very quickly, uh, let me throw it under the UV light and do a quick loom shot. Well, there you go. A couple of surprises. You have a loomed compass. It's not very heavily loomed, but it is loomed. And then you get a loomed second hand, which looks awesome on this watch. It's a fully loomed second hand. It's like an arrow second hand. And then you have the hour and minute hand, those are sort of a syringe sword hand. Those are fully loomed as well, which looks really good. And then the triangles, uh, all loomed. Obviously, nothing else on the dial is loomed, but uh, I think it looks really good. They did a good job executing the loom on this watch. Uh, the only problem with this watch, I would say, is the ghost state position. If you can't live with that, there is a ghost state position on the SW200. Considering the price, I think that's acceptable, but I, I wish they actually did away with that. That would be really good. But other than that, uh, that is probably the only flaw that I can find with this watch. They really did a faithful recreation of that original watch. They did it in a tasteful size of 39 millimeters. Uh, they didn't go too crazy with the size on it, and they didn't go too small either. So they did a really good sort of mid-sized or, uh, you know, 40 millimeter range watch, which I like. Uh, the stainless steel case, all bead blasted. They kept it really true to the original. You get that sterile dial. Um, really nicely executed for $595. You're getting the history. When you're comparing this to micro brands, I think this is a really good deal. When you compare it to brands like Hamilton, I think this could compare to a Hamilton khaki. Considering this is made in the United States or assembled in the United States with a Swiss movement, I think that's a little bit more attractive. And then there are other reasons why you would go with the Hamilton. So it's really up to the person who's spending the money. But 
Uh, they're both very appealing from my standpoint. I think this is very nice. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? How does it compare to something like the Hamilton Khaki? I know a lot of people have that watch. Very popular watch, so obviously a very hard watch to take on, and uh, Benris are trying to do it. So tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel, and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.